I'm Rod Serling, kind of an expatriate from the twilight zone. I'm a writer. I've been one almost 20 years. I've faced its problems and enjoyed its rewards. And that's what I'd like to spend a few moments talking to you about, writing. Have any of you ever thought of writing? I'm one of a dozen writers who believe that there are many talented people all over the country who could write well, who could write successfully if they had the proper guidance, the proper encouragement from experienced professionals. And now there is a way for you to learn writing from famous authors like Bruce Catton, the eminent Civil War historian and Pulitzer Prize winner. He's also an editor of American Heritage magazine. Faith Baldwin, one of this country's most productive writers. She's written more than 80 novels and has managed to bring up four children, too. Quite a trick. Bennett Cirk, distinguished author and publisher. He's head of Random House, and you've probably seen him on What's My Line. Mignon Eberhardt, ace mystery writer, and author of more than 50 whodunits. Max Shulman is a novelist, a dramatist, the creator of TV's Dobie Gillis. And Max has the dubious distinction of being the only writer I know who's shorter than I am. These famous writers and I felt that we wanted to bring our professional experience to people who want to write. So we joined with other well-known authors in every field to start the famous writer's school. This is a unique home study school that brings you sound professional training, no matter where you live. You learn right at home, on your own time schedule. Yet what you're offered is the kind of individual attention you could never receive in a classroom. The famous writer's school is located in Westport, Connecticut, the home of many professional writers and artists. People like Faith Baldwin. Faith has a sprawling white colonial home located a few miles from the school. She writes in a quiet, book-lined study. But when she takes a break from writing, Faith enjoys the beauty of the rolling New England countryside. After almost a half century of writing, she continues to be one of America's most productive and best-known authors. Another member of the faculty who lives near the school is Max Schulman. Whether it's a new book, a screenplay, or a humorous article for a magazine he's writing, Max enjoys working outdoors, weather permitting. Max is frequently found in his croquet field with fellow devotees like actor David Wayne, composer Richard Rogers, or perhaps Mary Shulman, his wife. A few miles from the Shulman home on the banks of the Saugatuck is the alma mater, the famous writer's school. It's also the home of the famous artist school. Each year, thousands of people visit the school and are welcomed by trained guides who show them how our home study method of teaching works. This is Gordon Carroll's office, the director of the school. Gordon was an editor of Reader's Digest and Time magazine. He's having a meeting with Faith Baldwin and Max Schulman. Uh, one of the questions that so many of our students ask us is how do you get life and action and, and real uh, identification into your characters. Let's say this, you don't, you don't uh, tell a reader about a character without showing. In other words, if you had a situation where you wanted to say that the boss was a ferocious man and every employee in the place was afraid of him, uh, you wouldn't simply say it and let it go at that. You would show the boss coming into the office. You would have some lines of dialogue. You would, you would actually show the effect of the boss on people. You demonstrate, you dramatize. The longer the dossier you have on your character, even a minor character, the better off you are because then you're able to predict what he'll do. I have a perfect dandy dossier on a man in the book I'm writing and he never appears in the book. This is the latest issue of our school magazine and there's a piece in here that I thought would bear down on the subject of where people get ideas from. Whenever I am stuck for an idea, I just systematically rummage through my life and, and think of things I've done, places I've been. Doesn't every student really have something to write about if you just dig down? Oh, surely. You put the, t the paper in the typewriter every, every day and then you write, no matter what you're writing. 
What do you think writing has really meant to you? What have you really gotten out of it? Uh, very hard work, tremendous disappointment, uh, very great rewards, and not a, all of them material. Well, I can't think of anything, um, any other field of human endeavor that would have um, uh, brought me as much pleasure as writing. There are days when I want to burn the typewriter and, uh, and go into aluminum siding, but um, <laughs> I don't think I really will. Faith Baldwin, Max Shulman, and other members of the guiding faculty meet regularly with Gordon Carroll. Out of meetings such as this came the textbooks for the famous writer's course. They took three years to produce. Into them has been instilled the knowledge of some of America's most successful writers. They contain everything we know about writing, and we never stop looking for ways to improve them. But a school is much more than textbooks. It is also professional instruction, and the core of our school is the gifted group of writers and editors who make up our instruction staff. At seminars such as this, when they discuss their students' problems with members of the guiding faculty, Today, they are meeting with Mignon Eberhardt, well-known mystery writer and member of the faculty. And her guest, Herbert Mays, who is editor of McCall's magazine, made it the leader in its field. Guiding faculty members guide the development of the school, its instructors and its students. The actual instruction begins right here. When assignments are returned to the school, they come to what we call Instructor's Alley. To people like John Green, a former editor and magazine writer with many years of experience. Before editing this student's assignment, he's going over her personal folder, which contains comments from instructors who've already worked with her. Elizabeth Lansing has written nearly 40 books, was an editor for Dodd Mead, and was on the staff of Q Magazine. Having thoroughly reviewed her student's background and progress record, she now begins editing his assignment. She may spend as much as two hours making corrections. Rewriting, reorganizing. Tom Gadd has already reviewed his student's progress and has edited her assignment. Now he's dictating a personal letter, giving her his suggestions and advice. Keep your readers in suspense until the characters resolve the plot for themselves. Your description are one of the best features of your story and help your readers see your settings clearly. There is a closeness between instructor and student. Students frequently write to their instructors about their writing problems, their accomplishments. We've seen the famous writer's school, met some of its guiding faculty, watched its instructors at work. But what about the people for whom the school exists? What about its students? They live in all 50 states. They've sold to more than 100 publications. They've published books. They've written magazine articles, newspaper features, and material for TV. We're proud of them. We'd like you to meet a few. Norman Nelson is young enough to have three grandchildren. She runs a household, and she writes. Her husband persuaded her to enroll in the school. Now she's writing two columns for local papers. I like voting people. I like to write about them. But they're more relaxed than many people. When they're out for fun, they're not frantic about it. Norma does some of her best writing. Where else? On her husband's boat. Oh, we have a lot of fun with our boat. We have a place in the cabin for books and for a typewriter on the table. Norma Nelson has a novel inside her head. She's been living with it for years, and now she's almost ready to write it. When I finish my famous writer's course, I feel sure that I'll be able to write my book and do it well. And I want that more than anything. Robert A. Matthews is 40 years old. He lives in Shawnee Mission, Kansas. He is a surgeon, a husband, and a father. He's also a writer. Dr. Matthews' life is a busy and active one, and writing serves to bring a release from the tensions of his daily work. He wants to write a novel. Its main character? A surgeon, of course. 
He hopes to use the training he receives in the famous writer's course to help him write that novel when he graduates. Despite his busy professional life, Bob Matthews manages time for some of life's more enjoyable moments. An exercise with a basket and a ball in the company of his son. Dr. Matthews has sold several stories to the Kansas City Star. And the first check he received for his writing is Frank, hanging on his office wall. And never far away from him when he's at the typewriter are the books that opened up another life for him, the famous writer's texts. Eileen thompson Panowski always wanted to write, but she had four children to raise. When they started to grow up, Eileen enrolled in the famous writer's school. Her wish is now a reality. She has already had four books published. On this trip to New York, she's meeting her publisher to sign a contract for another book. Her most recent book, The Apache Gold Mystery, was nominated Best Juvenile Mystery of the Year by the Mystery Writers of America. For 17 years, Doris A.G. of San Mateo, California, worked in an office. To her, it was a prison. She yearned to be outside, close to the sea that she loved. She yearned to write of it. Six months after enrolling in the famous writer's school, she wrote her first story. She sold it to the Reader's Digest. It was a most unforgettable character sketch. And Doris had the thrill of seeing it in print in the Digest. Doris wants success for many reasons, like her house by the sea. It's going to be a, the kind of a house that sits way up on a rock. When I go to bed at night, I'm going to hear the ocean out there. I'm not going to hear any traffic, and I'm not going to hear any people. I'm going to hear the, the ocean. And it's going to be on the rocky part of the Pacific, where I can see the waves actually splashing up. It's going up in tremendous towers. Doris A.G. is a student of the famous writer's school. Those unrewarding 17 years behind her. Her future in writing bright and exciting. People like Doris A.G., Norman Nelson, and others. People who have found their way to professional writing through the famous writer's school provide inspiration to members of the faculty, including myself. We share their joy in being published the satisfaction of being paid for it. It's quite a feeling, I know. As a college student, I sold my first radio script for $150, and I carried the check around with me for more than a month. I showed it, I reveled in it, I couldn't bear to spend it. It's that first sale, that's the big one. If you want to write, there may very well be a first sale in your future. And if you feel you have the talent, it can happen. The Famous Writer's School has developed a test which helps you find out if you have writing aptitude. We'd be glad to send it along to you with a brochure giving more details about this school. The test will be graded by a member of our staff. If you do well on this test, you may enroll for professional training in the school. But that's entirely up to you. There is, of course, no obligation. But I hope you'll join us. To get the Famous Writer's Aptitude Test, put your name, address, and age on a postcard and mail to Famous Writer's Test, Westport, Connecticut. There's no cost or obligation. If you'd like to write, send your name, address, and age to Famous Writer's Test, Westport, Connecticut. Find out if you have writing talent by sending for this special aptitude test. The address again, Famous Writer's Test, Westport, Connecticut. <laughs> 